Right, hello everybody and welcome to the preview for Blackburn Rovers versus Hull City, Tuesday the 14th of September, quarter to eight kickoff at Ewood Park. Match details there coming on your screen. Us fans in the UK for only the second time this season, not at the game like I will be. Ewood Park was on my bucket list to go to again, I've done it before. Um, in what I believe was our t not no not our most recent win against Blackburn, but the one before that. I've done it before. Whilst we were en route to Blackburn, my granddad thought he saw a kangaroo. God knows why. Because you don't get kangaroos in Blackburn. Anyway. It's on Sky Sports Arena. The channel for that on Sky is 408. And that is, of course, only in the UK. What that means for overseas viewers, I do not. No, but 7.45pm UK time is the kickoff on Tuesday. Team news then. Alfie Jones is rated as touch and go for the trip to Lancashire on Tuesday evening as Hull City plays Blackburn Rovers in front of the Sky Sports cameras. Jones picked up a thigh injury early last week and wasn't risked in the 0-0 draw away in Wales versus Swansea City, but could be available to face Tony Mowbray's side. George Honeyman could also be available for the visit to Ewood Park after recovering from an ankle injury. However, it looks more likely that the former Sunderland captain will return on Saturday against Sheffield United at the MKM Stadium, once again live on Sky Sports. On to ref watch then. The referee is John Brooks. The two um, linesmen are Darren Can and Edward Smart. The fourth official is Anthony Backhouse. Stats taken from our last game away at the Swansea.com stadium against Swansea, in which Hull City had four shots. Of those four, just one was on target, and that came in added time at the end of the second half. Hull City had 31% off possession. Hull City committed 11 fouls. The Tigers made 12 tackles. City won 46% of aerial duels in the game, and City made 367 passes in the game with a pass accuracy of 83%. Percent Stats continued historical against Blackburn now. In previous encounters with Blackburn, City have won 15, drawn 17 and lost 33. Since 2010, there have been 10 games involving these two sides. 17 goals have been scored accumulatively by both teams. In Hull City's last five games versus Blackburn, Hull City have won only once. Won one, drawn none, lost four. The only win in those five was a 1-0 victory away at Ewood Park in the FA Cup in January. And Hull City are winless in their last three games against Blackburn. <sighs> Don't look good for us, does it? But we were winless in our last three against Swansea and we got a 0-0 draw out of that. Another clean sheet is massive as we move on to what I think. It's massive. It's, um, it's massive because it shows we can keep the... We can get them out the net. We can keep them out the net, sorry. And, you know, we didn't attack much. We 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 recognise that. But goals will come. So far this season, we've played a title favourite. Two teams destined for top six in QPR and Bournemouth. Last year's playoff finalists. And we just didn't turn up against Derby. And we've shown we can score against Preston. We scored four, for goodness sake. And... You know, we're still getting players back. Honeyman and Jones are to return soon. And Malik Wilts won't be there match fitness-wise. He didn't have a pre-season, played 70 minutes and was injured during that time. So he's not going to be match fit. Give him time. Give the new players time to get fully embedded. I believe that they're almost there. When I was at the training ground the other week, Monka was in high spirits. Cannon was in high spirits. Tyler Smith wasn't even announced as a Hull City player yet. But he'd side things off on the Thursday, was announced on the Friday, and was fitting right in straight away. And speaking of Tyler Smith, he needs to start these next two games, I think. Because I love Josh McGuinness, don't get me wrong. <laughs> me and my dad met him while he was out having a few drinks with his mates last week and <laughs> they knew, they know who I am do, 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 uh, do Josh McGuinness and Louis Coyle both of them were there weird story check my Twitter for the full thing and you know give, but McGuinness he's not he doesn't really fit the way we play neither does Tom Eves to be fair 
No McGinnis and Eve slanderer. Just showing the facts. We can't. We can't just lump it up to a big man. We need to use the strength which is our wingers. And in that, McGinnis doesn't fit unless he's in a two. And I don't see McCann changing to a two. He loves his 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 too much. And I get that, because it worked for us last season. But I think Tyler Smith does need to start these next two games. Head-to-head -head battles then for us. Speaking of Tyler Smith, that's an indication as to why what I think will happen. Because he's on this screen. He will have to get past Daryl Lenihan. And Ben Brayton diaz will have to get past Deshaun Bernard, who, when he's been in league action for the Tigers, other than the Fulham game, of course, hasn't considered a goal. Yeah. Moving on to current form now, then. And um, we've stopped the rot, sort of. No goals in our last five, but two clean sheets out of two. And, you know, Blackburn, they love a draw as much as us. They've got three in the last five, we've got two. Only difference, only differences between our records. They've drawn one, won one. At the start of it, we've lost two. We're matching their results. Only difference is their scoring goals. Will be interesting to see what happens there. League table then. And we are slip we've slipped down to 20th place because Sheffield United had a fantastic result against Peterborough. Caden, I'm not pleased with the job that your boys have done. You need to tell whoever it is at the back to shape up because we needed Sheffield United to have as little momentum, as low a morale as possible. So I shall be having words with you over WhatsApp. <laughs> I'm kidding, mate. I'm kidding. And there is your league statistics screen. Where John Swift for Reading, who are in the relegation zone, has six goals. That is remarkable. On to around the ground, then on Championship Match Day 7. The quarter to eight kickoffs on Tuesday at AFC Bournemouth versus QPR, Blackpool versus Huddersfield Town, and Sheffield United versus Preston, alongside us there, of course. The two 8pm kickoffs on Tuesday are Reading versus Peterborough United and West Bromwich Albion versus Derby County. And then the, all of the kickoffs on Wednesday at 7.45pm and they are Birmingham City versus Fulham, Bristol City versus Luton Town, Coventry City versus Cardiff City, Nottingham Forest versus Middlesbrough, Stoke City versus Barnsley and Swansea City versus Millwall. Memorable match. This is where I went to Ewood Park. This is when I went there. This is when we were on route. My granddad thought he saw a kangaroo on the motorway and it's some rabbit, hare, deer, whatever. I didn't see. I just heard him make the comment and then my dad said, fill her in Blackburn. Blackburn, yeah. Anyway, 13th of February 2016 at Ewood Park in the Championship. Second half goals from Abel Hernandez and Modi Yame gave us a 2-0 win. And last time out against... Blackburn Rovers again at Ewood Park on the 11th of February 2020. We lost 3-0. We nearly conceded within the first 10 seconds because Sean McLaughlin forgot how to control the ball. It might have been Robin McKenzie. I don't know. We had a lot of defensive injuries in that time. Daryl Lennihan, Adam Armstrong and Dominic Samuel off the bench grabbed the goals. I would, I'd switched off by uh, the 73rd minute, but I knew which way the game was going just by the first half. Notably on the bench there, Elliot Bonds... James Berry and Andy Smith. Bonds now of Cheltenham. Berry now of Altrincham on loan at Macclesfield. And Andy Smith out on loan from us to Salford. And there is the record between ourselves and Blackburn. Dating all the way back to 11th of January 1947 when we first faced off against them in the FA Cup. On to shared shirts now then. Corey Evans today, the brother of... Johnny, Leicester City centre-back, like his brother, came through the Man United Academy. And it was from Man United um, that he came on loan to us in 2010. He was with us from 2010 through to 2011. In 18 appearances on loan from the Red Devils, he scored three times. He impressed, so we signed him permanently. He was with us for a further two years, staying until 2013. And in 97 appearances, he scored six goals, was part of the squad that took us back to the Premier League. And then it was from there, he went straight 
to Blackburn Rovers. He left there in 2020, the summer of 2020, in 197 appearances, scored four times. And he's now with Sunderland in League One. On to my predicted 11 now then in Grant McCann's 4-3-3 formation. In goal is Matt Ingram, the back four. Is the captain, Lou, is, sorry, the captain at right back, Louis Coyle. The two centre-backs on the left is Jacob Greaves. On the right is Deshaun Bernard. At left back is Callum Elder. The three central midfielders, we'll start with holding midfield first of all. That is Tom Huddleston. The two central midfielders are Greg Doherty and, excuse me, George Monka. On the right is Malik Wilkes. On the left is Keane Lewis Potter. And up top is Tyler Smith. So one change I think Grant McCann will make. And that is McGinnis out for Tyler Smith. On the bench then, we've got Nathan Baxter, Richie Smallwood, Josh Emanuel, Andy Cannon, Ryan Longman, Matt Smith and Josh McGinnis. That is your team in pictures and that is your team on the pitch on to my predicted score now then last year i said will we get the win and a lot of the time said yes we will it's different this year we know it's going to be different this year we knew that heading into the season and the first six games of the championship season have proved that but five points in six games is not bad it's not the record we'll need to get the 50 points which it, which you which is probably enough to guarantee survival. For that, we need to pick up our points per game just a little bit. I've seen a stat somewhere. I can't remember the exact figure. It's something like 0.78 points per game we've got currently. And we need to up that to about, I think it's 1.13. Something like that. I read that somewhere. I can't remember it fully. But do I think we'll get the win? I think it's going to be another nil nil draw because we can keep them out we just can't seem to put them in at this moment in time thank you very much for watching this preview everyone i hope you enjoyed you have please do drop a like on it subscribe if, uh, if you're new as well send me your predicted teams as well and make sure you download fan hub um the channel partners thank you very much for watching i'll see you later goodbye